Good morning, folks. Where do I even begin? Well, the largest flare yet burst from 2371 yesterday afternoon, another directly Earth-facing eruption. Given the size, position, and coronagraph images that followed, we were able to confirm Earth impact forecast on spaceweathernews.com with an initial impact prediction of tomorrow night. NASA and NOAA have both now updated their endless spirals and confirmed this blast is Earth-directed and on its way here, but they both see it as slightly slower, likely to arrive Thursday morning, so perhaps my initial forecast gave it a bit too much credit. We'll see. Anyway, the radiation storm got rough at one point. It hit level 3, but it is calming down nicely now, along with the solar flaring. The sunspots are showing that there is now a little bit of space between the magnetic areas, and the delta is in jeopardy today, could be decaying. The bigger story is that the KP has hit 8 twice, as a severe geomagnetic storm is in play with that fourth shockwave due to strike as well. The third shockwave indeed struck yesterday, on time, luckily with slightly lower speed than could have been seen or else the effects might have been a bit worse. The density was high as well, just an all-around whack to our system, but nothing shows it more than the magnetometer. Normally this blip up here would be considered a solid shockwave disruption. I've never seen this thing hit zero before, let alone go into negative way into negative. It's very rare to see that 250 line added up top as well. This shockwave reversed the field polarity for about two and a half hours here, which isn't long enough to do anything scary, but still a very unsettling bit of data. Any worse, and I'm confident satellites would have had issues as well. Other solar news includes a filament erupting off the departing northern quadrant, no, I don't mean that little guy up there. Sitting slightly south of that was a bigger rope that luckily lifted straight up and away. Very pretty, especially in pink. Top news stories today include new images from Ceres. Dawn is kicking butt up there. We have a terrific article on how solar wind induces atmospheric loss at Mars. The top story beneath our feet is taking place at the Cleveland volcano in Alaska where activity is on the rise. Typhoon still taking on southern China, but now a cyclone warning is also issued for that system west of India. Major rainmaker there. In the United States, the storms are getting very severe. Infrastructure at the mercy of the wind. Terrific penumbra lines on the cloud system, but that's not important. What is important is that you recognize the collision points between air masses, the convergence line between Earth spots. That line will be closer to the east coast tonight, so check local forecasts as you can see what she did along that convergence line last night. In Europe, we've got the big system offshore and still focusing on the system to the east near southern Sweden. Its curling cloud convergence is weakening though as the next system, it is almost there. Last but not least, down under we see the only strong low sitting next to Tasmania. Top alerts come with it. Weather shares in the comments are appreciated. We've got some current conditions and shots of our star to close. Definitely have more space weather on its way. Could have more produced today. We'll be updating spaceweathernews.com as needed. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and here comes the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone.